The vaccination debate has hit the campaign trail. Carly Fiorina says she wants parents to hold the power. Last week during a stop in Iowa, Fiorini was asked about her stance on the controversial topic by a mother of five who claimed that one of her children had an adverse reaction to a vaccination. When you have highly communicable diseases where we have a vaccine that's proven, uh, like measles or mumps, then I think a parent can make that choice. But then I think a school district is well within their rights to say, I'm sorry, your child cannot then attend public school. Um, so a parent has to make that trade-off. I think when we're talking about some of these more esoteric immunizations, then I think absolutely a parent should have a choice. And a school district shouldn't be able to say, sorry, your kid can't come to school for a disease that's not communicable, not contagious, and where there really isn't any proof that they're necessary at this point. Fiorina continued by sharing a story saying her own daughter felt bullied by the school nurse when she hesitated to get HPV vaccine for Fiorina's granddaughter. And she called the HPV vaccine esoteric and contrasted it to the measles vaccine. Fiorina seems to be trying to play both sides. She said school districts should be able to deny students admittance if they haven't had certain vaccines. Some reaction to Fiorina's remarks has not been kind. It's important to note, vaccination mandates and exemptions are matters of state, not federal or local law. But she still has support from some Iowa voters. According to a Suffolk University poll, Fiorina has 7% of the vote in Iowa. She's tied for fifth place with Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Joining me now is Dr. Corey A. Baer, professor at the LSU Health Sciences Center, and Christina Hildebrand, founder and president of A Voice for Choice. Doc, what's your reaction to, Christine, to Carly Fiorina's stance on vaccines? It, it was very upsetting because for her to mention the word esoteric, uh, <laughs> you have to really be able to step into a scientific arena to decide what's important and what's esoteric. She doesn't have the credentials to be able to do that, and we have so many studies to show that that vaccine, including the HPV vaccine, as well as the myriad of other vaccines that we give to uh, young people, uh, and as well as the, uh, the elderly population prevent disease. So I think she just probably should stay in her lane and, and pick a side because right now she hasn't. All right. Ms. Hildebrand, Fiorina did say school districts should be able to deny students uh, admittance if they haven't had certain vaccines. Is that something that you agree with? Um, I don't really think it's about agreeing with it or not agreeing with it. I think it's um, a parent should have the ultimate right to choose what medical treatment happens to their children, what gets injected into their children. And, you know, the doctor says that we have all of this scientific research, but really, honestly, when it comes to vaccines, we have very little um, unbiased research. The research that's done is done by the CDC or by the vaccine manufacturers, um, and it is not unbiased research. The, we've, we heard from Congressman Posey in the last week or couple of weeks, um, he put it on congressional record that there were um, CDC documents regarding related to the MMR vaccine that were um, fraudulently shredded. Um, they were, they basically showed that African American um, boys are three times more likely to get autism from the MMR vaccine um, and that there are other links to autism um, and they chose to take them to a garbage can and shred them into a garbage can at the CDC. A whistleblower, William Thompson, decided um, to not do that because he knew it was illegal and he handed over after a few years, handed them over to Congressman Posey and Congressman Posey has now requested that there is a congressional hearing well, right. into that. Okay. So let, when let, we let, look me at, ask, let me ask at the let, let, me here. let me just you ask know, you this very quickly. Research. So both you and Dr. Abair, what about if parents have religious reasons that restrict uh, their children from being subject to vaccines that everybody else has agreed could make them vulnerable to disease? Do you think at that level that one should have absolute authority and autonomy to determine as a parent which vaccines will and will not be uh, had by one's children? I'll talk to you first and then to Dr. Abair. Yeah. I think, I think when it comes to a parent's right to choose, all vaccines have a risk associated with them. You just look at the vaccine package inserts and you can read through all but of I'm the But I'm saying specifically the, even in uh, light issues. of greater vulnerability so, that they might be exposed right. to or that the illness I, they might I, spread. I, I, I got yes, it. yes, because it's, I, I it's it. ultimately the parent's choice, and it is right. there are there are risks involved with all vaccines, and there it, that's in the package inserts. If right. there is a parent, and that, you have a choice. Well, let me let me let me let Dr. Abair respond to you first. Let me let Dr. Abair respond first. Okay, wait, 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 stop. But first of all, let's talk about the 107 studies that have been proven to show that vaccines have been safe and vaccines are not uh, and who don't has cause autism. Let him finish though. And who has 
let me finish. Let me finish. And there's been one study in 1998 that showed 12 patients that uh, got MMR and got uh, autism. I'm not and, that, and, about and let me finish. Any of that. Uh, okay. And that doctor has been discredited, and he lied and took six six hundred thousand dollars from lawyers to do the study. Not to mention the last the study CDC that was public. Let me finish. Let him finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Not to mention the last study that was done that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which looked at over one hundred thousand children and showed no increase in autism. Now to the next question that it was also asked. Did not, let me it also, finish. One second. It also did no, not I'd, show that it didn't cause autism. It was. Left yeah, the door you wide have open one that study, study to say that it did, and and uh, one hundred and seven no, no, to show that it did. Right, make your second point, Doctor Abir. Let's let Doctor Abir make a second let point. Let me finish. Now, when you asked about the question about the parents' right, there are some uh, diseases that are so contagious, meaning measles if you get in a room with a person that has the measles the odds are that you're going to get the measles a 90 percent chance so let's look at this a person that is less than one year of age can't get the measles vaccine but can transmit it so that is why we have a problem because just because you don't want to to get the measles vaccine you are putting my child at risk for let's getting let Ms. respond to that substitute sclerosing have... panencephalitis M miss I, I i mean i, I let's, respect okay, what let's you're let saying. her respond to that dr but, but that's it's not the case. Okay, so let's go back to the, if we go back to the studies, if you look at the Cochrane report, which I believe is what you're referring to, but the Cochrane report basically said that there, it is an open door. There has, the, the research is not conclusive either way that autism or, the door is and closed. I'm not only talking about, or, it <laughs> is not is closed. closed. And not the other door. piece that I'm referring to is you can't base science on stuff that is fraudulent, that you've been told you can, is correct, the, your, your, your but it's fraudulent. Concept, the your CDC, whole concept. The your whole CDC concept of your has study is fraudulent. Dr. Wakefield, his whole study is fraudulent. I'm not talking and you about Dr. Wakefield. Right. I'm not talking you about Dr. Wakefield. I'm talking okay. about the Look, CDC Dr. Corey here Bear in America. Dr. Corey Bear and Christina Hildebrand, CDC. thank you so much for your time tonight. We'll resolve these matters at a later date. We'll have, a lot, we'll have a lot more coming up.